minerals or flows the measure those his goodly eyes that o'er the files and musters of the war have glowed like plated mars now bend now turn the office and devotion of their view upon a tawny front his captain's heart reneeds all temper and is become the bellows and the fan to cool a gypsy's lust look where they come Take but good note, and you shall see in him the triple pillar of the world transformed into a strumpet's fool. Behold and see! <laughs> You did desire it. <laughs> Speak not to us. Oh, no. Yeah, come 
Egyptian fetters I must break or lose myself in dotage. What are you? Fulvia, my wife, is dead. What, where died she? In Sicyon. Her length of sickness with what else more serious importeth thee to know this bears. Forbear me. There's a great spirit gone. Thus did I desire it. What our contempts doth often hurl from us, we wish it ours again. She's good being gone. The hand could pluck her back that shoved her on. I must from this enchanting queen break off ten thousand harms more than the ills I know my idleness doth hatch. Ho now, Enobarbus! <laughs> What's your pleasure, sir? I must with haste from hence. <laughs> and we kill all our women. We see how mortal and unkindness is to them. If they suffer our departure, that's the word. I must be gone. We are not catching, but the least noise of this dies instantly. I've seen her die twenty times upon four. Poor She home. is cunning past man's thought. Alack, sir, no. The passions are made of nothing but the finest part of pure love. This cannot be. Cunning in her, if it be, she makes a shower of rain as well as Joe. Fulvia is dead, sir. Fulvia is dead. Fulvia? Dead. <laughs> Why, sir, give the gods a thankful sacrifice. <laughs> when it pleaseth their deities to take the wife of a man from them, they chose to man the tailors of the earth. Comfort ye therein, that when old robes are worn out, there are members to make news. But the business she has broached with the state cannot endure my absence. And the business you have broached here cannot be without you, especially that of Cleopatra's, which wholly depends on your bow. No more light answers. Let our officers have notice what we purpose. A 
shall break the cause of our expedience to the queen and get her leave to part. Friends in Rome, petition us at home. Sextus Pompeius hath given the dare to Caesar and commands the empire of the sea. Much is breeding. Say our pleasure to such whose places under us require our quick remove from hence. I shall do it. you know well, 
something it is, I would. Oh, my oblivion is a very Antony, and I am all forgotten. If that your royalty holds idleness your subject, I should take you for idleness itself. Tis sweating labor to bear such idleness so near the heart as Cleopatra this. But, sir, forgive me. Your honor calls you hence. If we'll be deaf to my unpitied folly and all the gods go with you. Upon your sword, sit laurel victory and smooth success be strewed before your feet. Let us go. Come. Our separation so abides and flies that thou residing here goes yet with me. And I, hence fleeting, remain here with thee. Awake. not Caesar's natural vice to hate a great competitor. From Alexandria, this is the news. He fishes, drinks, and wastes the lamps of night in revel. Hardly gave audience. Or vouchsafe to think he had partners. I must not think he has evils enough to darken all his goodness. His faults in him seem as the spots of heaven. You are too indulgent. Here's more news. Thy biddings have been done, and every hour, most noble Caesar, shalt thou have report to power to his abroad. <clears throat> Pompey is strong at sea, and it appears that he is beloved of those that have only feared Caesar. To the ports the discontents repair, and men's reports give him much wrong. I should have known no less. This common body, like to a vagabond flag upon the stream, goes to and back. Lacking the varying tide to rot itself with motion. Caesar, I bring thee word. Menecrates and Menas, famous pirates, make the sea serve them which they ear and wound with ships of every kind. No vessel may peep forth, but tis as soon taken as seen. For Pompey's name strikes more than could his war resist it. Antony, leave thy lascivious wassels. When thou once was beaten from Medina, when thou slewest Hershius and Panza, consuls, at thy heel did famine follow, whom thou foughtst against, though daintily brought up, with patience more than savages could suffer. Thou didst drink the stale of horses and the gilded puddle, which beasts would cough at. Thy palate then did deign the roughest berry on the rudest hedge. And all this, it wounds thine honor that I speak it now, was born so like a soldier that thy cheek, so much as lanked not. Tis pity of him. Let his shames quickly drive him to Rome. The time we twain did show ourselves to the field, and to that end assemble we immediate counsel. Pompey thrives in our idleness. On the morrow! I shall be furnished to inform you rightly, both by sea and land, of what I confront this present time. To which encounter it is my business, too. Farewell. Farewell. Oh, what you shall learn meantime of troubles abroad, I beseech you, sir, let me be partaker. Doubt not, sir. I knew it for my bond.
and honey. Why, madam? That I might sleep out this great gap of time. My Antony is away. Oh, you think of him too much. Oh, just <laughs> dream. Oh, madam, I trust not so. <laughs> Thou, eunuch, Mardian. What is your highness' pleasure? Not now to hear thee sing. Oh. <laughs> I take no pleasure in aught a eunuch has. Oh. <laughs> Tis well for thee that, being unseminared, thy freer thoughts may not fly forth of Egypt. Hast thou affections? Yes, gracious madam. Indeed! Oh, not indeed, oh. madam, for I can do nothing but what is honest to be done. Oh. Yes, have I fierce affections, but think what Venus did with Mars. <laughs> oh, Charmian, where thinks thou he is now? Stands he, or sits he, or does he walk, or is he on his horse? Oh. Oh, happy horse to bear the weight of Antony. <laughs> Do bravely, horse, for knowest whom thou move. The Jemmy Atlas of this earth, the arm and virginate of men. He's speaking now, or murmuring. Where's my serpent of old Nile? Oh. For so he calls me. <laughs> now I feed myself with most delicious poison. <laughs> Charmian, tis the man, but note him. He was not sad, for he did shine on those that make their looks by his. He was not merry, which seemed to tell them his remembrance lay in Egypt with his joy. <laughs> but between both, oh, heavenly mingle. Medest thou my posts? Aye, madam. Twenty several messengers. Why do you send so thick? Who's born that day when I forget to send to Antony shall die a beggar. Oh. Ink and paper, Charmian. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, my good Alexis. Oh. Did I, Charmian, ever love Caesar so? <laughs> oh, that brave Caesar. <laughs> Be choked with such another emphasis. Say the brave Antony. The valiant ah. Caesar. <laughs> Isis, I will give thee bloody teeth. Thou with Caesar, oh. compare again, my man of men. Oh, by your most gracious pardon, I sing but after you. <laughs> my salad days, when I was green in judgment, cold in blood, to say as I said then. Oh. But come <laughs> away, get my ink and paper. He shall have every day a several greeting, or I'll unpeople Egypt. If the great gods be just, they shall assist the deeds of justice men. No worthy Pompey, that what they do delay, they not deny. Whilst we are suitors to the throne, decay is the thing we sue for. And we, ignorant of ourselves, beg off in our own harms, which the wise powers deny us for our good. So find we profit by losing of our prayers. I shall do well. The people love me and the sea is mine. Mark Anthony in Egypt sits at dinner and will make no wars without doors. Caesar gets money where he loses heart. Lepidus flatters both, of both is flattered, but he neither loves nor either cares for him. Caesar and Lepidus are in the field. A mighty strength they carry. Where have you this? Tis false. 
From Sylvia, sir. He dreams. I know they are in Rome together looking for Antony. But let all the charms of love salt Cleopatra. Soften thy waned lip. Let witchcraft join with beauty, lust with both. Tie up the libertine in a field of beasts. Keep his brain fuming. And now, McGreed, this is most certain that I shall deliver. Mark Antony is every hour in Rome expected. Since he went from Egypt, tis a space for farther travel. I could have given less matter a better ear. Menas, I did not think this amorous surfeiter would have donned his helm for such a petty war. His soldier ship seems twice the other twain. But let us rear the higher our opinion that our stirrings can, from the lap of Egypt's widow pluck, the nearly lust-wearied Antony. I cannot hope that Caesar and Antony shall well greet together. His wife that's dead did trespass to Caesar. His brother warred upon him, although I think not moved by Antony. I know not, Menas, but how the fear of us may cement their divisions and tie up our petty difference. We yet not know. Be it as our gods will have it. It only stands our lives upon to use our strongest hands. Come in us. I shall entreat him to answer like himself. Caesar, move him. Let Antony look over Caesar's head and speak as loud as Mark. It is not a time for private stomach Every aid. time serves for the matter that is then born in it. But small to greater matters must give way. What if the small come first? Your speech is passion. I pray you stir no embers up. Here comes the noble Antony. Yonder Caesar. I learn you take things ill which are not so, or being concern you not. I must be laughed at, if or for nothing or a little, I should say myself offended with you chiefly of the world. More laughed at that I should once name you derogatively, when to sound your name, it not concerned me. So my being in Egypt, what was to you? No more than my being in Rome was much to residing in Egypt. Yet if you there did practice on my state, your being in Egypt might be my question. How intend you practice? You may be pleased to catch it mine intent by what did here befall me. Your wife and brother made wars upon me, and their contestation was themed for you. You were the word of their war. Oh, you do mistake your business. My, brother's never, my brother never did urge me in his acts. I did inquire it and have my learning from some true reports that drew their swords with you. Did he not rather discredit my authority with yours and make the wars alike against my stomach, having alike your cause? Of this, my letters before did satisfy you. If you pick a quarrel, it must not be with this. You praise yourself by laying defects of judgment to me, but you patched up your excuses. Not so, not so. I, I know you could not lack, I am certain on it, very necessity of this thought, 
that, that I could not with graceful eyes attend to those wars which fronted mine own peace. As for my wife, I would you had her spirit in such another. A third of the world is yours, with which a snapple you may pace easy, but not such a wife. I wrote to you in rioting in Alexandria. You did pocket up my letters, and with taunts did jibe my missive out of Sir, audience. let this fellow be nothing of our strife. If we contend out of our question, wipe it. You have broken the article of your oath, which you shall never have tongue to charge me with. Sir, see, No, sir. Lepidus, let him speak. The article is sacred, which he talks on now, supposing that I lacked it. But on, Caesar, the article of my To lend oath. me arms in aid when I required them, the which you both deny. Neglected, rather. Okay. Truth is that Fulvia, to have me out of Egypt, made wars here, for which myself, the ignorant motive, do so far ask pardon, as befits mine honor to stoop in such a case. Nobly spoken! If it might please you to enforce no further the griefs between ye, to forget them now or to remember that the present need speaks to atone you. Worthily spoken, good Messina! If you borrow one another's love for the instant, you may, when you hear no more words of Pompey, return it again. You shall have time to wrangle in when you have nothing else to Thou do. Thou art a soldier only, speak no more. Go to then, your considerate stone. I do not much dislike the matter, but the manner of his speech. For it cannot be we shall remain in friendship, our conditions so differing in their acts. Give me leave, Caesar. Speak, Agrippa. Thou hast a sister by the mother's side, admired Octavia. Great Mark Antony is now a widower. Say not so, Agrippa. Had Cleopatra heard you, your reproof were well deserved of rashness. I am not married, Caesar. Let Agrippa speak further. To hold you in perpetual amity, to make you brothers, and to bind your hearts with an unslipping knot, take Antony Octavia to his wife whose beauty claims no worse a husband than the best of men, whose virtue and whose general grace speak that which none else can utter. By this marriage, all these little jealousies which now seem great within be nothing. Pardon what I have spoke, for tis a study, if not a present thought by duty ruminated. Will Caesar speak? Not till he hears how Antony is touched with what is spoke already. What power is there in Agrippa, should I say, Agrippa be it so, to make this good? The power of Caesar and his power unto Octavia. May I never dream of impediment. Let me have your hand. Further this act of grace. And from this hour, the hearts of brothers govern in our loves, sway our great designs. There's my hand. A sister I bequeath you, whom no brother did ever love so dearly. Let her live to join our kingdoms and our hearts, and never fly off our loves again. Happily, amen. Time's upon us. Where uh, Pompey must be presently sought, or else he seeks out us. Where lies he? About the Mount Messina. What's his strength? By land, great and increasing, but by sea, he is an absolute master. So is the fame. Would we had spoke together. Haste we for it, yet ere we put ourselves in arms, dispatch we the business we spoke of. With most gladness. And do invite you to my sister's view. Whither straight, I'll leave you. Now, let us, Lepidus, not lack your company. Oh, not sickness would detain me, noble Anthony. Like a burnished throne burned on the water. 
The stern was beaten gold and purple, the sails, and so humid that the winds were lovesick with it. For her own person, it beggared all description. She did lie in her pavilion, cloth of gold, of tissue, or picturing that Venus where we see the fancy outwork nature. On each side her stood pretty dimpled boys like smiling cupids with divers colored fans whose wind did seem to glow the delicate cheeks which they did cool and what they undid did oh rare for antony from the barge a strange invisible perfume hits the sense of the adjacent force the city cast her people out upon her and antony throned in the marketplace did sit alone whisking to the air which but for vacancy had gone to gaze on Cleopatra too and made a gap in nature. A rare Egyptian! <laughs> Upon her landing, Antony sent to her. Invited her to supper, she replied. It should be better he became her guest, which she entreated. Our courteous Antony, now the word of no woman heard speak, <laughs> being barbered ten times o'er goes to the feast, and for his ordinary, pays his heart for what his eyes eat. Oh, <laughs> royal wench! She made great Caesar lay his sword to bed. He plowed her and she cropped. <laughs> now Antony must leave her utterly. <laughs> Never. He will not. If beauty, wisdom, modesty can settle the heart of Antony, then Octavia is a blessed lottery to him. Let us go. Good evening, Barbus. Make yourself my guest whilst you abide here. Humbly, sir, I thank you. My great office may sometime divide me from your bosom. All which time, before the gods, my knee shall bow. My prayers to them for you. Good night, sir. My Octavius. Read not my blemishes in the world reports. I have not kept my square, but to that to come will all be done by the rule. Good night, sweet lady. Good night, sir. Good night. Now, sir, you do wish yourself in Egypt. Would I had never come from thence, nor you thither. If you can, your reason. I see it not in my motion, have it not in my tongue, but yet tie you to Egypt again. Whose fortune shall rise higher, Caesar's or mine? Caesar's. Therefore, O oh Antony, stay not by his side. Thy demon, thy spirit which keeps thee, is noble, courageous, high, unmatchable, where Caesar's is not, but near him thy angel becomes afeard as being o'erpowered. Therefore, you must make space enough between you. Speak this no more. To none but thee, no more but went to thee. If thou dost play with them at any game, thou art sure to lose. And of that natural luck, he beats thee against the odds. Thy luster thickens when he shines by. I say again, thy spirit is all afraid to govern thee near him. But here away, tis noble. Get thee gone. Be it art or hap, he hath spoken true. The very dice obey him. In our sports, my cunning faints under his chance. If we draw lots, he speeds. I will to Egypt. And though I make this marriage for my peace, in the east, my pleasure lies.
from Charmian? My arm is sore. Best play with Mardian. As well a woman with a eunuch played as with a woman. Oh. Oh. Come, you'll play with me, sir? As well as I can, madam. And when goodwill is showed, though it come too short, oh. the actors may plead oh. pardon. Oh. oh, none now. Oh, oh. from Italy! <laughs> Ram thou thy fruitful tidings in my ear that have long time been barren. Oh, madam, madam. Antonius dead. If thou say so, villain, thou killst thy mistress. But well and free, if thou so yield him, there is gold. And here, by bluest veins to kiss, a hand that kings have lipped and trembled kissing. First, madam, he is well. <laughs> There's more gold. But, Sirrah, mark, we used to say the dead are well. Bring it to that, the gold I give thee will I melt and pour down thy ill-uttering throat. Good madam, hear me. Well, go to, I will. But there's no goodness in thy face if Antony be free and helpful. Not well. Thou shouldst come like a fury crowned with snakes, not like a formal man. Will it please you to hear me? I have mind to strike thee ere thou speak'st. Yet if thou say Antony lives is well. Madam, he is well. Well said. <laughs> and friends with Caesar. Oh, art an honest man. Caesar and he are greater friends than ever. <laughs> Make me a fortune from me. But yet, madam. I do not like but yet. It does allay the good precedence. Fie upon but yet. But yet is as a jailer to bring forth some monstrous malefactor. Prithee, friend, pour out the pack of matter to my ear, the good and bad together. He's friends with Caesar. In state of health, thou sayest, and thou sayest free. Free? Madam, Madam, no, I made no such report. He's bound unto Octavia. For what good turn? Uh, for the best turn in the bed? I am pale, Charmian. Madam, he's married to Octavia. The most infectious pestilence upon me! Oh, good, good, madam, patience! Yes. What say you? Hatch, horrible oh, felon! Good lord, oh. burn thine eyes like balls before me! I'll unhair thy head! Oh, yes. Thou yes. shalt be whipped! to bring bad news. Give to a gracious message a host of tongues, but let ill tidings tell themselves when they be felt. I have done my duty. Is he married? <laughs> I cannot hate thee worse than I do if thou again say yes. He's married, madam. The gods confound thee! Dost thou hold their still? Should I lie, madam? Oh, I would thou didst. He is married. I crave your highness pardon. He is married? Take no offense, for know that I would not offend you to punish me for what you make me do seems most unequal. He is married to Octavia. Get thee from hence. The merchandise which thou hast brought from Rome are all too dear for me. Lie they upon thy hand and be undone by them. With your highness, patience. In praising Antony, 
I have dispraised Caesar. Many times, madam. I am paid for it now. Lead me from hence. I faint. Iris, Charmian, tis no matter. Go to the fellow, good Alexis. Bid him report the feature of Octavia. Her years, her inclination, let him not leave out the color of her hair. Bring me word, quickly. Let him forever go. Let him not. Charmian, though he be painted one way like a gorgon, the other ways a Mars. Bid you, Alexis, bring me word how tall she is. Pity me, Charmian. But do not speak to me. Lead me to my chamber. before us sent, which if thou hast considered, let us know if it will tie up thy discontented sword, and send back to Sicily much tall youth, that else must perish here. To you all three, senators alone in this great world, chief factors for the gods, I do not know wherefore my father should revengers want, having a son and friends since Julius Caesar who at Philippi the good Brutus ghosted. There saw you laboring for him. What was it that moved pale Cassius to conspire? And what made the all-honored, honest Roman Brutus to drench the capital? But that they would have one man, but a man. And that is it hath made me rig my navy with which I meant to scourge the ingratitude that this spiteful Rome cast upon my noble father. Take your time. Thou canst not fright us with thy sails, Pompey. We'll speak with thee at sea. At land, thou knowest how much we do overcount thee. At land, indeed. Thou dost overcount me of my father's house. But be pleased to tell us, and this is for the present, how you take the offers we have sent. There's the point. You have made me offer of Sicily, Sardinia, and I must rid all the sea of pirates. Then to send measures of wheat to Rome. This greed upon, to part with unhacked edges and bear back our targs undented. That's our offer. Now then, I came here before you a man prepared to take this offer, but Mark Antony put me to some impatience. You must know, when Caesar and your brother were at blows, your mother came to Sicily and did find her welcome friendly. I have heard it, Pompey, and am well studied for liberal thanks, which I do owe you. Let me have your hand. I did not think, sir, to have met you here. The beds in the east are soft. And thanks to you, they called me timelier than my purpose hither, for I have gained by it. Well met here! I hope so, Lepidus. Thus we are agreed. I crave our composition may be written and sealed between us. That's the next to do. We'll feast ere we part. Let's draw lots on who shall begin. That will I, Tom. No, Anthony, take the lot. Aboard my galley, I invite you all. Will you lead, lords? Show us the way, sir. Come! This Pompey, I'll never follow thy pale fortunes more. Who seeks and will not take when once tis offered, shall never find it more. Thy father, Pompey, would ne'er have made this treaty. You and I have known, sir. At sea, I think. We have, sir. You have done well by water. And you by land. Ha! Praise any man that will praise me. Though it cannot be denied what I have done by land. Nor what I have done by water. Yes. Something you could deny for your own safety. You have been a great thief by sea. And you by land. <laughs> there I deny my land servants. <laughs> but give me thy hand, Minus, 
If our eyes had authority here, they might take two thieves kissing. <laughs> All men's faces are true. Whatsoever their hands are. But there's never a fair woman has a true face. No, no slander. They steal hearts. We came hither to fight with you. Now, for my part, I'm sorry it has turned to a drinking. Pompey doth this day laugh away his fortune. We do, sir. He cannot weep it back again. You have said, sir. We look not for Mark Antony here. Pray you, is he married to Cleopatra? Caesar's sister is called Octavia. True, sir. She was the wife of Caius Marcellus. But now she is the wife of Marcus Antonius. Pray ye. It is true. Then is Caesar and he forever knit together. If I were bound to the vine of this unity, I would not prophesy so. I think the policy of this purpose made more in the marriage than the love of the party. I think so, too. But you shall find the band that seems to tie their friendship together will be the very strangler of their amity. Octavia is of a holy, cold, and still conversation. Uh, who would not have his wife so? Not he that himself is not so. Tis Mark Antony. He will to his Egyptian dish again. Then shall the sighs of Octavia blow the fire up in Caesar. And, as I said before, that which is the strength of their amity shall prove the immediate author of their variance. Antony will use his affection where it is. He married but his occasion here. And thus it may be. Come, sir, will you aboard? I have a help for you. I shall take it, sir. We have used our throats in Egypt. Come, let's away. Sir, take from me a great part of myself. Use me well in it. This is to prove such a wife as my thoughts make me. Most noble Antony, let not the piece of virtue which is set betwixt us as the cement of our love, to keep it builded, be the ram to batter the fortress of it. For better might we have loved without this mean if on both parts this be not charity. Make me not offended by your distrust. I have said. I, you shall not find, though you be there in curious, the least cause for what you seem to fear. So the gods keep you and make the hearts of Romans serve your end. We will hear part. Farewell, my dearest sister. Fare thee well. My noble brother. Ah, the April's in her eyes. It is love's spring, and these the showers to bring them on. Be cheerful. And uh, sir. Look well to my husband's house, and... What, Octavia? I'll tell you in your ear. Her tongue will not obey her heart, nor can her heart inform her tongue. Well, Caesar weep. He has a gladness face. He is so much the worse were he a horse. So he is being a man. Why, Lepidus, when Antony found Julius Caesar dead, he cried almost roaring. And he wept when at Philippi he found Brutus slain. That year he was troubled by a room. And what he did willingly confound, he wailed, believe it, till I wept too. No, sweet Octavia, you shall hear from me still. The time shall not outgo my thinking. Come, on sir, you. come. I'll wrestle you in my strength of love. Look, here I have you. Fool. Thus I let you go and give you to the gods. Adieu. Be happy. Let all the number of stars light your fair way. Farewell. Farewell. Farewell.
gracious majesty. Didst thou behold Octavia? I, dread queen. Where? Madam, in Rome, I saw her led between her brother and Mark Antony. Is she as tall as me? She is not, madam. Didst thou hear her speak? Is she shrill-tongued or low? Madam, I heard her speak, and she is low-voiced. That is not so good. <laughs> he cannot like her long. Like her, oh, I sister, it's impossible. I think so, Charmian, dull of tongue and dwarfish. <laughs> what majesty is in her gait? Remember, if e'er thou look'st on majesty, she creeps. Her motion and her station are as one. She presents a, a body rather than a life. Oh. A, a statue than a breather. Oh. Is this certain? Or I have no observance. Oh. Three in Egypt cannot make better note. He is very knowing. I do perceive why there's nothing in her yet. The fellow has good judgment. Excellent. Get with her years, I prithee. Uh, madam, uh, she was a widow. Huh? Widow? Charmian <laughs> Hart! And I do think she was 30. <laughs> Her hair, what color? Brown, madam. <laughs> and uh, her forehead is as low as she would wish it. There's gold for thee. Thou must not take my former sharpness ill. I will employ thee back again. I find thee most fit for business. Go, make thee ready. Our letters are prepared. A proper man. Indeed, he is so. I repent me much that so I harried him. Why, methinks by him, this creature's no such thing. Nothing, madam. I have one more thing to ask him yet, good Charmian. But tis no matter. Thou shalt bring him to me where I will write. All may be well enough. I warrant you, madam. <laughs> That were excusable, that in thousands more of semblable import. But he has waged new wars against Pompey, spoke scantily of me. When perforce he could not but pay me terms of honor, cold and sickly he vented them. Most narrow measure lent me. Oh, my good lord, believe not all, or if you must believe, stomach not all. A more unhappy lady, if this division chance, never stood between praying for both parts. For the good God shall mock me presently when I shall pray, oh, bless my Lord and husband. Undo that prayer by crying out as loud, oh, bless my brother. Husband win, win brother prays and destroys the prayer. No midway twixt these extremes at all. Gentle Octavia, let your best love draw to that point which seeks best to preserve it. If I lose mine honor, I lose myself. That I be not yours, then yours so branchless. But as you requested, yourself shall go between us. Meantime, lady, I'll raise the preparation of a war shall stain your brother. Make your soonest taste that your desires are yours. Oh, thanks to my lord. Oh, the Jove of power make me most weak. Most weak, your reconciler. Wars betwixt you twain would be as if the world should cleave and that slain man should solder up the rim. When it appears to you where this begins, turn your displeasure that way, for our faults can never be so equal that your love can equally move with them. Provide your going, choose your own company, and command what cost your heart has mind to. Oh, now, friend Arrow. 
There's strange news come, sir. What, man? Caesar and Lepidus have made wars upon Pompey. Yes, this is old. What is the success? Well, Caesar, having made use of Pompey, made use of Lepidus in the wars against Pompey, presently denies him rivality. Would not let Lepidus partake in the glory of the action, and not resting here, accuses Lepidus of letters he had formerly wrote to Pompey. Upon Caesar's own appeal, seizes him. So the poor third is up till death enlarge his confines. Where's Antony? He's walking in the garden thus, and spurns the rush that lies before him, cries, Fool Lepidus! And threats the throat of that his officer that murdered Pompey. Our great navy's rigged. For Italy and Caesar, more Domitius, my lord desires you presently. My news, I might have told you after. Could be not, but let it be. Bring me to Antony. Come, sir. Then in Rome he has done all this and more in Alexandria. Here's the matter of it. In a marketplace on a tribunal silvered, Cleopatra and himself, on chairs of gold, were publicly enthroned. At the feet sat Caesarion, whom they call my father's son, and all the unlawful issue that their lust since then hath made between them. Unto her he gave the establishment of Egypt, made her of lower Syria, Cyprus, Lydia, absolute Queen. This in the public eye, in a common show place, where they exercised great Media, Parthia, and Armenia, he gave to Alexander. To Ptolemy, he assigned Syria, Cilicia, and Phoenicia. She, in the habiliments of the goddess Isis that day appeared, as oft before gave audience, as tis reported so. Let Rome be thus informed. Who, no, queasy with his insolence already, will the good thoughts pull from him? The people know it and have already heard his accusation. Who does he accuse? Caesar. Ha! And that having in Sicily Sextus Pompeius spoiled, we had not rated his part of the isle. Then does he say, he lent me some shipping unrestored. <laughs> Lastly, he frets that Lepidus of the Triumvirate should be deposed. And being that we detain all his revenue. Sir, this should be answered. Tis done already, and the messenger gone. I have told him that Lepidus was grown too cruel, but he his high authority abused and did deserve change. For what I have conquered, I grant him part. But then in his Armenia and other of his conquered kingdoms, I demand the like. He'll never yield to that. Nor must not then be yielded to in this. Hail Caesar. And my lords, hail most dear Caesar. That ever I should call thee castaway. You have not called me so, nor have you called. Why have you shown upon us thus? You come not like Caesar's sister, the wife of Antony, should have an army for an usher. But you are come a market maid to Rome. We should have met you by sea and land, supplying every stage with an augmented greeting. Good my lord, to come thus was I not constrained. But did it on my own free will. My lord, Mark Antony, hearing that you prepared for war, acquainted my grieved ear with all, whereon I begged his pardon for return. Which soon he granted, being an obstruct between his lust and him. Do not say so, my lord. I have eyes upon him, and his affairs come to me on the wind. Where is he now? My lord, in Athens. No, my most wrong sister Cleopatra hath nodded him to her. He hath given his empire up to a whore, who now are levying the kings of the earth for war. I, me, most wretched, that have my heart parted betwixt two friends, that doth afflict each other. Welcome hither. Your letters did withhold our breaking forth, till we perceived both how you were wrong-led, and we in negligent danger. Welcome to Rome. Nothing more dear to me, you are abused. Beyond the mark of thought and the high God to do you justice makes his ministers of us and those that love you best of comfort and ever welcome to us. Welcome, lady. Welcome, dear madam. Each heart in Rome does love and pity you. Is it so, sir? Tis most 
certain. Sister, welcome. I pray you be ever known to patience, my dearest sister. <laughs> Advantage he shakes off, and so should you. Your ships are not well manned. No disgrace shall fall you for refusing him at sea, being prepared for land. By sea, by sea. Most worthy sir, you therein throw away the absolute soldiership you have by land. I'll fight at sea. I have sixty sails, season none better. Our overplus of shipping will we burn, with the rest full manned from the head of Actium, beat the approaching Caesar. But if we fail, we then can do it by land. Thy business. The news is true, my lord. He is described. Caesar has taken Turin. Can he be there in person? It is impossible, strange, that his power could be. Canidius, our 19 legions thou shalt hold by land, and our 12,000 horse will to our ship away, my Thetis. How now, worthy soldier? A noble emperor, do not fight by sea. Trust not to rotten plagues. Do you miss out this sword and feed my wounds? Well. Well, away! Hup! Hup! What? By Hercules, I think I am in the right. Soldier, thou art. With his whole action grows not in the power on it. So are leaders led, and we are women's men. Do you keep our land the legions of the horse hold, do you not? Marcus Octavius, Marcus Justus, Publicola, and Celius are for sea. But we keep hold by land. That the speed of Caesar's carries beyond belief. Whilst he was yet in Rome, his power went out in such distractions as beguiled all spies. The emperor calls Canidius with news the times in labor and throws forth each minute some. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Egyptian admiral and all their 60 fly and turn the rudder to see it, mine eyes are blast. No! No, God, the goddesses, all the whole city of them. In fact, the greater council of the world is lost and very ignorant. We've pissed away kingdoms and provinces. How appears the fight? On our side, like the token pestilence where death is joy on right bordering, nag of Egypt, who leprosy or take! Raise the sail and fly. As I beheld, mine eyes did sicken at the sight and could not endure a further view. She once being loose, the noble ruin of her magic, Antony clasps on his sea wing and like a doting mallard leaving the fighting height flies out. Black, black. Our fortune on sea is out of breath. Sinks most lamentably. Had our general been with, he knowed himself, then it gone well. Why are you thereabouts? Why then, good night indeed. For telepinesis are they fled. It is easy to it. And there I shall await what further comes. But to Caesar will I render my legions and horse. Six kings already show me the way of yielding. Oh, yet to follow the wounded chance of Adam. Though my reason sits in the wind against me. Hark, the land bids me tread no more upon it. It is a shame to bear me. Friends, come hither. I am so elated in the world, I have lost my way forever. I have a ship laden with gold. Take that, divide it, fly, and make your peace with Caesar. No, I not. I have resolved myself upon a course which has no need of you. My treasure's in the harbor, take it. Leave me, for indeed I have lost my command. Therefore I pray you, I'll see you by and by. Lady, gentle madam, to him, comfort him. Do, most dear queen. Do, why, what else? Let me sit down. Oh, Juno. Oh, you, no, sir. no. Fie, fie, fie. Madam, madam, oh, good Sir, sir. He at Philippi kept his sword even like a dancer, whilst I struck the lean and wrinkled Cassius. It was I that the mad Brutus ended. He alone dealt on lieutenantry, and no practice had in the brave squares of war, yet now no matter. Ah, oh, stand by. The queen, my lord, the queen. Go to him, madam, speak to him. He is unqualified with very shame. Well then, sustain me. Most oh. noble sir, arise, the queen approaches. Her head's declined and death will seize her, but your comfort makes the rescue. I have offended reputation, a most unnoble swirling. Sir, the queen. <laughs> Whither hast thou led me, Egypt? See how I convey my shame out of thine eyes. By looking back, what I have left behind, destroyed in dishonor. Oh, my lord. My lord, forgive my fearful sails. I little thought you would have followed. No, Egypt, thou knewest too well that my heart was to thy rudder tied by the sails, and thou shouldst tow me after. Oh, my pardon. You did know how much you were my conqueror, and that my sword, made weak by my affection, would obey it on all cause. Pardon, pardon. Nay. Nay, fall not a tear, I say. One of them rates all that is won and lost. Give me a kiss. 
Even this repays me. We sent our schoolmistress as ambassador to Caesar. Has she come back? No. Love. Oh, I am full of lead. Some wine within there and our viands. Fortune knows we scorn her most when most she offers blows. <laughs> Such as I am, I come from Antony. Be it so, declare thine office. Lord of his fortunes, he salutes thee and requires to live in Egypt, which not granted. He lessens his request and of thee sues to let him breathe between the heavens and earth, a private man in Athens. This for him. Next, Cleopatra does confess thy greatness, submits her to thy might, and of thee craves the circle of the Ptolemy for her heirs, now hazarded to thy grace. For Antony, I have no ears to his request. The queen... Of audience nor desire shall fail, so she from Egypt drive her all disgraced friend or take his life there. This, if she perform, shall not sue unheard. So to them both. Fortune pursue thee. Bring her through the vans. Thidius, to try thy eloquence, tis time, dispatch. From Antony win Cleopatra, promise, and in our name what she requires. Add more. From thine invention offers. Caesar, I go. Observe how Antony becomes his flaw, and what thou think'st his very action speaks in every power that moves. Caesar, I shall. only that would make his will lord of his reason. What, though you fled oh. from that great face of war, whose several ranges trited each other, why should he follow? Oh, prithee, peace. Is that his answer? I, my lord. The queen shall then have courtesy, so she will yield us up. So he says. Let her know it. To the boy Caesar, send this grizzled head, and he will fill thy wishes to the brim with principalities. That head, my lord. To him again. Tell him. I dare him to lay his gay comparisons apart and answer me decline, sword against sword, ourselves alone. Thou write it, follow me. <laughs> yes, like enough. I battled Caesar will unstate his happiness and be staged to the show against a sorter. That he should dream, knowing all measures, the fool Caesar will answer his emptiness. Caesar, thou hast subdued his judgment too. A messenger from Caesar. What, no more ceremony? See my women against the blown rose, may they stop their nose that kneeled unto the buds. Admit him, sir. Caesar's will? Hear it apart. None but friends, say boldly. So happily are they friends to Antony? He needs as many, sir, as Caesar has, and needs not us. Caesar, please, our master will leap to be his friend. For us, you know whose he is. We are, and that is Caesar's. So, thus then, thou most renowned, Caesar entreats not to consider from what case thou stand further than he is Caesar. Go on, right royal. <laughs> Caesar knows that you embrace not Antony as you did love. But as you feared him. Oh. The scars upon thy honor, therefore, he does pity as constrained blemishes, not as deserved. He is a god and knows what is most right. Mine honor was not yielded, but conquered merely. I will ask Antony. Sir, sir, thou art so leaky that we must leave thee to thy seeking, for thy dearest quit me. Shall I say to Caesar what you require of him? For he partly begs to be desired to give. 
But it would warm his spirits to hear from me that you had left Antony and followed him under in his protective shroud, the universal landlord. What's your name? My name is Thidius. Most kind messenger, say this to great Caesar in deputation. Tell him I kiss his conquering hand. Tell him I lay my crown at his feet and there to kneel. Tell him from his all-obeying breath I hear the doom of Egypt. Tis your noblest course. Give me grace to lay my duty upon thy hand. Faders, by Jove that thunders. What art thou, fellow? One who but performs the bidding of the fullest man and worthiest to have command obeyed. You will be whipped. Approach there. Ah, oh, you kites. Take hence this jack and whip him. Better plain with a lion's wealth than with an old one. Thine. Moon and stars whip him till like a boy you see him cringe his faith and whine aloud for mercy. Take him hence. Mark Antony, I... Tug him away, being whipped. Bring him again. The jack of Caesar shall bear us an errand to him. You were half blasted ere I knew you. Ha! Have I my pillow left on pressed in Rome to born the getting of a lawful race and buy a gem of a woman to be abused by one that looks on feeders? Good, my lord. You have been a bugler ever. I found you as a morsel cold upon dead Caesar's trencher. Wherefore is To let this? one that will take rewards and say, God, quit you. Be familiar with my playfellow, your hand. Oh, that I were upon the hill of Basin to outroar the horned herd, for I have savage cause. Is he whipped? Tell me, my lord. Cried he and beg pardon? <laughs> he did ask favor. Get thee back to Caesar. Tell him thy entertainment. Look now! Oh, see that he makes me angry with him. He seems proud and disdainful. Hopping on what I am, not what he knew I was. He makes me oh. angry. At this time, most easy tis to do it. When my good stars that were my former guides have empty left their orbs and shot their fires into the abysm of hell. Hence with thy stripes be gone! Have you done yet? Alack, our terrene moon is now eclipsed and portends the fall of Antony. I must stay his time. To flatter Caesar, would you mingle eyes with one that ties his points? Not know me yet. Cold-hearted toward me. Oh, dear, if I be so, from my cold heart, let heaven engender hail and poison it from the source. The first stone drop in my throat and so dissolve my life. <laughs> I am satisfied. Caesar sits down in Alexandria. Well, I will oppose his fate. There's hope in it yet. That's my brave lord! I shall be treble sinewed, hearted, breathed, and fight maliciously. Call to me all our sad captains. Fill our bowls once more. Let's mark the midnight bell. It is my birthday. I had thought to have held it poor. But since my lord is Antony again, I will be Cleopatra. We will yet do well. Call all his noble captains to my lord. Do so. We'll speak to them. Tonight, I'll force the wine peep through their scars. Come, my queen. There's sap in it yet. <laughs> now, he'll outstare the light. It's to be furious. It's to be frighted out of fear. And in that mood, the dove will peck the falcon. I see still a thin emotion in our captain's brain restores his heart. When valor preys on reason, it eats the sword it fights with. I will seek some way to leave him. Boy, and shy 
besides this, he had power to beat me out of Egypt. My messenger, he hath whipped with rods. There's me to personal combat, Caesar to Antony. Let the old ruffian know, I have many other ways to die. Meantime, laugh at his challenge. <laughs> Caesar must think when one so great begins to rage, he's hunted even the falling. Give him no breath, but make boot of his distraction. Let our best heads know, tomorrow the last of many battles, we mean to fight. Within our files there are, of those that served Mark Antony but late, enough to fetch him in. See it done. Uh, and feast the army. We have store enough to do it, and they have earned the waste. Poor Antony. Brother, good night. Tomorrow is the day. It will determine one way. Good night, brother. Heard you nothing strange about the streets? Nothing, what news? I'll be like just but a rumor. Good night to you, brother. Well, sir, good night. Soldier! Wrap up the watch! Good you! Good night. Good watch. Good watch. Good watch. Good night. Here we! And on the morrow, if our navy thrive, I have an absolute hope our landmen will stand up. A tis a brave army and full of purpose. Music in the air. Under the earth. It starts well, does it not? No. Peace, I say. What should this mean? God, Hercules, whom Anthony loved, now leaves him. No. Let's see if other watchmen do here as we do. How now, masters? Hear the noise. Aye, is Do you hear, masters? Do you hear? Follow the noise so far as we have quarter. Let's see how we give up. Content. Distrain. God, so angry. Chuck, heroes, come. Come, good fellow. Put thine iron on. If fortune be not ours today, it is because we brave her. Come. Nay, I'll help too. What's this for? Well, let be, let be. Thou art armor of my heart. Mm. Uh, false, false. This, this. this. Sooth, la, I'll help. Thus it must be. Well, well. <laughs> we shall thrive now. See this now, my good fellow? <laughs> Go. Put on thy defenses. Reef we, sir. Is not this buckled well? Rarely, rarely. He that unbuckles this, till we do please to doff it for our repose, shall hear a storm. <laughs> ah, well to thee, welcome. Thou looks like one that knows a warlike charge. A thousand, sir. Only though it be, have on their riveted trim, and at the port expect you. Ah. Whatever becomes of me, this is a soldier's kiss. I'll leave you now like a man of steel. You that will fight, follow me close. I'll bring you to it. Adieu. Lead me. He goes forth gallantly, that he and Caesar might determine this great war in a single fight. Then Antony. But now, well on. The gods make this a happy day for Antony. Wouldst thou and those thy scars had once prevailed to make me fight at land? <laughs> Hadst thou done so, the kings that have revolted and the soldier that had this very morning left thee would have still followed thy heels. Who's gone this morning? Who? One ever near thee. Call for Enabarbus, he shall not hear thee. What sayest thou? Say he 
treaties with Caesar. Sir, his chests and treasure he has not with him. Is he gone? It's most certain. Go, Eros. Send his treasure after. Do it! Detain no jot. I charge thee, write to him. I will subscribe. Gentle adieus and greetings. Say that I wish he never find more cause to change a master. How my fortunes have corrupted honest men. Dispatch! Ina Barbus. Go forth, Agrippa, and begin the fight. Or will his Antony be took alive? Make it so known. Caesar, I shall. The time of universal peace is near. Prove this a prosperous day, the three-nooked world shall bear the olive freely. <laughs> Antony's come into the field. Go charge, Agrippa. Plant those that have revolted in the vaunt, that Antony may seem to spend his fury upon himself. Idiots. And the rest that fell away have entertainment, but no honorable trust. I have done ill, which I do accuse myself so sorely that I will joy no more. Eat of Orbis. Antony hath after thee sent all thy treasure with his bounty over plus. The messenger came on my guard, and that thy tent is now unloading of your mold. Mules, I give it you. Fuck not, Eat of Orbis. I tell you true. I am alone, the villain of the earth, and feel I am so most. Oh, Antony, thou mine of bounty, how wouldst thou have paid my better service when my temper to thou dost so crowd with gold? It blows my heart. I fight against thee now. I will go seek some ditch wherein to die. The ballast best fits my latter part of life. you all, for doughty handed are you, and have fought today not as you have served the cause, but as it had been each man's like mine. You have shown all Hector's. Give me your hand. To this great fairy I commend thy acts. Make her thanks. Bless thee, O thou day of the world. Chain mine arm neck. Leap thou, a tyrant all through proof of harvest to my heart. Lord of lords, O oh infinite virtue, comest thou smiling from the world's great snare, uncaught. My nightingale, we have beat them to their beds. 
What girl, though grey, do something mingle with our younger brown? Yet have we a brain to nourish our nerves, and can yet go for goal of use. Behold this man. Commend unto him thy savoring hand. Kiss it, my warrior. He hath fought today as if a god in hate of mankind had destroyed in such a shape. I'll give thee, friend, an armor all of gold. T'was the king's. He hath deserved it. Ah, give me your hand. <laughs> Trumpeters, with brazen din, blast you the city's ears. Make mingle with our rattling tabarines. That heaven and earth may strike their sounds together, applauding our approach. Yeah! If we be not relieved within this hour, we must return to the court of guard. This last day has been a cursed one, too. Uh, Bear me witness, knight. What dread is this? Stand close, listen. Be witness to me, O oh, thou blessed moon. When men revolted, shall upon record bear hateful memory. Poor Inobarbus did before thy face repent. Inobarbus? Peace. Hark further. <laughs> the sovereign mistress of true melancholy. The poisonous damp of night, the sponge upon me, that life may hang no longer on me. Throw my heart against the flint and hardness of my bolt, which will break the powder and finish all foul thoughts. Anthony, forgive me in thine own particular, but let the world rank me and register a master lever and a fugitive. Caesar. Let us do so, but he sleeps. No, faints, rather. Go we to him. Awake, awake, sir, and speak to us. See you, sir. The hand of death hath wrought him. Hark, the drums. Let us bear him to the court of guard. He is of note. Come on, then. Today by sea, we please them not by land. Why, both, my lord? Or would they fight in the fire? Or in the air, we'd fight there too. But this it is, our foot upon the hill, adjoining to the city, where their appointment we may best discover and look on their endeavor. But being charged, we will be still by land, which as I take it, we shall, for his best force is forth to man his galleys to the vales and hold our best advantage. Yet they are not joined. Where yon pine does stand, I shall discover all. I'll bring thee word straight how tis like to go. The swallows have made in Cleopatra's sails their nest. The augurists say they know not, they cannot tell, look grimly, and dare not speak their knowledge. And he is brave and dejected and by starts his fretted fortunes give us hope and fear of what has and has not. All is lost. This foul Egyptian hath betrayed me. My fleet hath yielded to the foe, and yonder they cast their caps up and carouse together like friends long lost. Triple turned off. Tis thou hast sold me to this novice, and my heart makes only wars on thee. Bid them all fly! For when I am revenged upon my charm, I have done all. Bid them all fly, be gone! Oh, son, if I uprise, I shall see no more. Fortune and Antony part here. Even here do we shake hands. Oh, come to this. Betrayed I am. Well, this false soul of Egypt, this green charm whose eye vexed forth my wars and called them home, whose bosom was my crown, my chief end. 
like a like a right gypsy hath it fast and loose beguiled me to the very heart of love. What heroes, heroes! <laughs> ah, thou spell. Oh, Lord! No. Why is my lord enraged against his love? Vanish, or I shall give thee thy deserving and blemish Caesar's triumph. No. Let him take oh. thee and hoist thee up to the shouting plebeians. Follow his chariot like the greatest spot of all thine sex. Oh. Oh. Most monster like me shown for forced diminutives to no. adults. No. And let patient Arcadia plow thy busy job with her prepared nails. Heroes! Oh! The witch shall die to the young Roman boy she hath sold me, and I fall under this plot. She dies for it! Heroes! Oh! Oh, see, my women! Oh, he's more mad than they tell him for his shield! To the monument! There lock yourself and send him word you are dead. The soul and body ripe not more in parting than greatness going off. To the monument. Sir Lucas, go tell him I have slain myself. Say the last I spoke was Antony, and worded frithy piteously. Hence, Sir Lucas, Bring me word how he takes my death to the monument! Thou yet beholdst me, heroes. Aye, noble lord. Sometimes we see a cloud that's dragonish. A vapor sometimes, like a bear or a lion. A towered citadel. A pendant rock. Thou hast seen these signs. They are... Black Vespers pageants. Aye, my lord. That which is now a horse, even with a thought, the rack dislimbs and makes it indistinct, like water is in water. It does, my lord. My good knave, heroes. And now thy captain is even such a body. Here I am, Antony, yet cannot hold this visible shape. I made these wars for Egypt and the queen, whose heart I thought I had, for she had mine. She, Eros, has packed cards with Caesar and false played my glory unto an enemy's triumph. Nay, weep not, gentle Eros. There is left us ourselves to end ourselves. Oh, thy vile lady, she hath robbed me of my sword. No, Anthony, my mistress loved thee, and her fortunes mingled with thine she entirely. She hath betrayed me and will die the death. The death of a person can be paid but once, and this she has discharged. What you would have has been done into thy hand. Her last words were, Antony, most noble Antony, then in the midst of a tearing ground did break the name of Antony. It was between her heart and lips she rendered life thy name so buried in her. Dead then? Dead. Unarm, Eros. The long day's task is done, and we must sleep. That thou departs tent safe, to pay thy labor richly. Go. Off, luck off. The sevenfold shield of Ajax cannot keep the battery from my heart or cleave my sides. Heart wants to be stronger than thy continent. Crack thy frail case. Pace, heroes, the pace. No more a soldier. Bruised pieces go. You have been nobly born. From me a while. I will overtake the Cleopatra. 
and weep for my pardon. So it must be, for now all lengths is torture. See you then, and all is done. Eros! I come, my queen. Eros! Stay for me. Where souls do couch on flowers will hand in hand, and with our sprightly port make the ghost gaze. Dido and her Aeneas shall want troops, and all the haunts be ours. Heroes, come, heroes! What would my lord? Heroes, thou hast sworn that when the exigent should come, which now is come indeed, when I should see behind me the inevitable prosecution of disgrace and horror, that on my command thou then wouldst kill me. Do it. The time is come. Thou strikes not me to Caesar thou defeatest. Put color in thy cheek. Gods withhold me. Shall I do that which all the Parthian darts, though enemy, lost aim and could not? Give us, would thou be windowed in great Rome and see thy master thus, with pleached arms, bending down his corrigible neck, his face subdued to penetrative shame? I would not see Come it. Come then, for with a wound I must be cured. Draw that thy honest sword which thou hast worn most useful for thy country. Oh, sir, do it at once! For thy precedent services are all but accidents, unpurposed. Draw and come. Turn from me then that noble countenance, wherein the worship of the whole world lies. Lo thee. My sword is drawn. To let it do at once the thing why thou hast drawn it. My dear master, my captain and my emperor, let me say, before I strike this bloody stroke, farewell. It is said, man, and farewell. Farewell, great chief. Shall I strike now? Now, heroes. Why there, then? Thus do I escape the sorrow of Antony's death. Thrice nobler than myself. Thou teachest me, O valiant Eros, what I should, and thou couldst not. But I will be a bridegroom in my death, and run into it as to a lover's bed. Come then, and Eros, thy master dies, thy scholar. To do thus, I learned of thee. How? Oh, 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 not dead. Oh, not dead. Oh, the gods. Oh, oh, dispatch me. What's the noise? Oh, oh, I have done my work, ill friends. Oh, make an end of what I have begun. The star is fallen. The time is at its period. Let him that loved me strike me dead. Not uh, I, nor I, uh, nor anyone. Uh, thy death and fortunes bid thy followers fly. Uh, this sword, but shown to Caesar with this tidings, shall enter me with him. Uh, Where is Antony? There, Alexis, there. Lives he? Wilt thou not answer, man? Art thou there, Alexis? Oh, oh. Almost absolute uh, lord. Uh, my mistress Cleopatra sent me to thee. When did she send thee? Now, me? my lord. Where is she? Locked in her monument. Oh, she had a prophesying fear of what hath come to pass. And now I am come, I dread too late. Oh, too late, Alexis. Oh, my God, I pray thee. What ho, uh, the emperor's God! The God, what ho! Come, your lord calls. Uh, bear me, friends, where Cleopatra binds. Uh, this is the last service. What I shall command you, I've led you off. Carry me now, good friend, up, and have my thanks for all. Oh, 
Shaw man. I will never go from hence. Be comforted, dear madam. No, I will not. All strange and terrible events are welcome, but comforts we despise. How now? Is he dead? His death is upon him, but not dead yet. Look, to the other side of your monument, his God have brought him thither. Oh, son, burn now the sphere thou moved in. Darkling stand the varying shore of the world. Oh, Antony. Antony, Antony! Help Charmian, help Iris. Help, help friends below. Let's draw him hither. Peace. Uh, not Caesar's valor hath overthrown Antony, but Antony's hath triumphed on itself. So it should be that none but Antony should conquer Antony. But woe to so. I am dying, Egypt. Dying. Only here I importune death a while, until many thousand kisses. The poor last I lay upon thy lips. But come, come, Antony, help me, my women. We must draw thee up. Assist, good friends. Oh, quick, oh, I'm gone. Oh. Had I great Juno's power, the strong-winged Mercury should fetch thee up and set thee by Jove's side. Oh. Come a little. Wishes were ever fools. Come, come, come. Welcome, welcome. Die when thou hast lived, quicken with kissing. At my lips that power, thus I would wear them out. I'm dying, Egypt, dying. Oh, give me some drink and let me speak a while. No, let me speak. Let me rail so high that the false huswife fortune break her wheel, provoked by my offense. Oh, one word, sweet queen. Of oh, Caesar, seek your honor with your safety. They do not go together. <coughs> the miserable chain, now at my end, laments no sorrow at. But please, your thoughts. By feeding them with those my former fortunes wherein I live. The greatest prince of the world, the noblest, and do not now basely die. Not cowardly, put off my helmet to my countrymen. A Roman by a Roman, valiantly vanquished. Ah, my spirit. He's going. I can no more. Noblest of men would die. Hast thou no care of me? Shall I abide in this dull world which in thy absence is no better than a sign? Oh, see my women. The crown of the earth doth melt. My lord. Withered is the garland of the war. The odds is gone. And there is nothing left remarkable beneath the visiting moon. I am oh, lady. She's dead too, our lady. sovereign. Madam. 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 Royal Egypt. Peace, peace, Iris. Empress. No more than e'en a woman. And commanded by such poor passions as the maid that milks or does the meanest chores. It were for me to throw my scepter at the injurious gods, to tell them that this world did equal theirs till they had stolen our jewel. How do you, women? What? What good cheer! How oh, now, Charmian? Good sirs, take heart. 
will bury him. And then, what's brave, what's noble, let's do it after the high Roman fashion and make death proud to take us. Come, we have no friend but resolution. And the briefest end. Macinus, bid him yield. Being so frustrate, tell him he mocks the pauses that he makes. Caesar, I shall. What for is that? And what art thou that darest appear thus to us? I am called Decretus. Mark Antony I served, who best was worthy best to be served. Whilst he stood up and spoke, he was my master. What is it thou sayest? I say, O Caesar, Antony is dead. The breaking of so great a thing should make a greater crack. He is dead, Caesar, by that self hand which writ his honor in the axe it did. This is his sword. I robbed his wound of it. Behold, it stained with his most noble blood. Look you sad, friends. The gods rebuke me, but it is tidings to wash the eyes of kings. And strange it is that nature must compel us to lament our most persisted deeds. Hear me, good friends. But I will tell you it's some meter season. The business of this woman looks out of her, and we shall hear what she says. Whence are you? A poor Egyptian yet. The queen, my mistress, can find in all she has her monument of thy intense desire's instruction that she preparedly may frame herself to the way she's forced to. Bid her have good heart. She soon shall know of us by some of ours how honorable and kindly we determine for her. For Caesar cannot live to be ungentle. So the gods preserve thee. Come hither, Agrippa. Go and say we propose her no shame. Give her what comforts the quality of her passion doth require. Lest in her greatness she do defeat us. By some mortal stroke for her life in Rome would be eternal in our triumph. Go, and with your speediest, bring us what she says and how you find of her. Caesar, I shall. Go with me to my tent, where you shall see how hardly I was drawn into this war, how calm and gentle I proceeded in all my writings. Go with me and see what I can show in this. Desolation does begin to make a better life. Tis paltry to be Caesar. Not being fortune, he's but fortune's knave, a minister of her will. And it is great to do that thing that ends all other deeds. Caesar sends greeting to the Queen of Egypt and bids thee study on what fair demands thou means to have him grant thee. What's thy name? My name is Agrippa. If your master would have a queen his beggar, you must tell him that majesty, to keep decorum, must no less beg than a kingdom. If he please to give me conquered Egypt for my son, he gives me so much of mine own as I will kneel to him with thanks. And be of good cheer. You'll fall into a princely hand, fear nothing. Let me report to him your sweet dependency, and you shall find a conqueror who will pray in aid for kindness where he for grace is kneeled to. Pray you, tell him I am his fortune's vassal, and I send him the greatness he has got. <laughs> so report, dear lady. Have comfort, for I know your plight is pitied of him that caused it. Oh, you see how easily she may be surprised. Oh, 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 quick! Quick! Oh, 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 do not abuse my master's bounty by the undoing of yourself. Where art thou, death? Come hither, come! Come, come, take a queen with many babes and beggars. Oh, temperance. 
first lady. Sir, I will eat no meat. I'll not drink, sir. If idle talk will once be necessary, I'll not sleep neither. This mortal house I'll ruin. Do Caesar what he can. No, sir, I'll not wait pinioned at your master's court. Rather make my country's high pyramids my gibbet and hang me up in chains. Oh, 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 oh. oh. What thou hast done, thy master oh. Caesar knows, and he hath sent for thee. For the queen, I'll take her to my guard. So, Messinus, it shall content me best. Oh. Be gentle to her. Oh. To Caesar I will speak what you shall please, if you'll employ me to him. Say I would die. Noble Empress, hast thou heard of me? I cannot tell. Assuredly, you know of me. No matter, sir, what I have heard or known. You laugh when boys or women tell their dreams. It's not your trick. I understand not. I dreamt there was an Emperor Anthony. Oh, such another sleep that I might see, but such another man. If it might please His me, face I... was as the heavens. And therein stuck a sun and moon, which kept their course, and lighted the little O, the earth. Oh, sovereign creature, his I legs have... bestrid the ocean, his reared arm crested the world. His voice was property to all the tuned spheres, and that to friends. But when he meant to quake and shake the orb, he was as rattling thunder. For his bounty, there was no winter in it, and autumn twas, that grew the more by reaping. His delights were dolphin-like. They showed his back above the elements they lifted. Cleopatra. Think you there was, or might be, such a man as this I dreamt of? Madam, no. You lie up to the hearing of the gods. But if there be, or ever were one such. It's past the size of dreaming. Madam, hear me. Your loss is as yourself great. I do feel by the rebound of yours a grief which smites my very heart at root. I thank you, sir. Know you what Caesar means to do with me. I am loath to tell you what I would you knew. Nay, pray you, sir. Though he be honorable and... He'll take me as his slave to Rome. Madam, he will. I know it. Which is the queen of Egypt? Madam, it is the emperor. Rise, you shall not kneel. I pray you, rise. Rise, Egypt. Sir, the gods will have it thus. My master and my lord, I must obey. Take to you no hard thoughts. The record of what injury you did us, though written in our flesh, we shall remember as things but done by chance. So, sir, the world. I cannot project mine own cause so well to make it clear, but do confess I have been laden with like frailties which before have often shamed our sex. Cleopatra, no. We will extenuate rather than enforce. If you apply yourself to our intents, you shall find a benefit in this change. But if you seek to lay on me a cruelty by taking Antony's course, you shall bereave yourself my good purposes and put your children to that destruction which I'll guard them from if therein you rely. I'll take my leave. And may through all the world, tis yours, and we, your scutcheons, your signs of conquest, may hang in what place you please. Here, my good lord. You shall advise me in all for Cleopatra. This is the brief of money, plate, and jewels I am possessed of. 
Tis exactly valued, not petty things admitted. Where's Sir Lucas? Here, madam. This is my treasurer. Let her speak, my lord, upon her peril, that I have reserved to myself nothing. Speak the truth, Sir Lucas. Madam, I would rather seal my lips than to my peril speak that which is not. What have I kept back? Enough to purchase what you have made known. Nay, blush not, Cleopatra, for I approve your wisdom in the deed. See, Caesar, oh, behold how pomp is followed. Mine will now be yours. Should we shift estates, yours would be mine. The ingratitude of this Seleucus does even make me wild. Oh, slave, of no more trusted love that's hired. Oh, rarely base. Good queen, let us entreat you. Prithee, go hence, or I shall show the cinders of my spirits through the ashes of my chance. Wert thou a man, thou would have mercy on me. Forbear, Sir Lucas. Be it known that we, the greatest, are misthought for things that others do. And when we fall, we answer others' merits in our name, are therefore to be pitied. Cleopatra, not what you have acquired nor what acknowledge, put we in the role of conquest. Still be it yours. Caesar's no merchant to make prize with you of things that merchants sold. Therefore be cheered, for we intend so to dispose you as yourself shall give us counsel. Feed and sleep. Our care and pity is so much with you that we shall remain your friend. And so, adieu. My master and my lord. Not so. Adieu. He words me, girls. He words me that I will not be noble to myself. But hark thee, Charmian. Oh, finish, good lady. The bright day is done, and we are for the dark. Hi thee again. I have spoke already, and it is provided. Go put it to the haste. Madam, I will. Where's the queen? Madam, as there too sworn by your command, I tell you this. Caesar through Syria intends his journey, and in three days you, with your children, will he send before. <laughs> Make you best use of this. I have performed your pleasure and my promise. Messenus, I shall remain your debtor. And I your servant. Adieu, good queen. I must attend on Caesar. Farewell and thanks. Now, Iris, what thinkst thou? Thou, an Egyptian puppet, shall be shown in Rome as well as I. Mechanic slaves in greasy aprons, rules and hammers, shall uplift us to the view. In their thick breaths, rank of gross diet, shall we be enclouded and forced to drink their vapor. Oh, the gods forbid! Nay, tis most certain, Iris. I'll never see it. For I am sure my nails are stronger than my eyes. Why, that's the way to fool their preparation and conquer their most absurd intents. Now, Charmian, show me my women like a queen. Go fetch my best attires. I am again for Sidness to meet Mark Antony. Sira Iris, go. Now, noble Charmian, will dispatch indeed. And when thou hast done this chore, I'll give thee leave to play till doomsday. <laughs> Get my crown and all. <sighs> Wherefore's this noise? Here is a rural fellow who will not be denied your highness' presence. 
He brings you pigs. Let him come in. What poor an instrument may do a noble deed. He brings me liberty. This is the man. Avoid and leave him. Hast thou the pretty worm of Nihilus there that kills and pains not? Yes, truly I have him, but I would not be a party to desire you to touch him, for his bite is immortal, and those that do die of it seldom or never recover. Rememberest thou any that have died on't? Oh, very many men, and women too. Get thee hence. Farewell. Oh, farewell. I wish you the joy of the worm. Farewell. Look, you, uh, you must think this. The worm will do his kind. Hi, aye, farewell. Look, you, the worm must be kept in the keeping of wise people. For there is no goodness in the worm. Take thee no care. It shall be heeded. I pray you, give it nothing. It's not worth the feeding. Will it eat me? Not so simple a man, but I know the devil himself will not eat a woman. Woman is a dish for the gods, if the devil dress her not. Yet these same whore-son devils do the gods great harm in their women. For every ten they make, the devil's more five. Well, get thee gone. Farewell. I, I wish you the joy of the worm. Give me my robe, put on my crown. I have immortal longings in me. Now, no more the juice of Egypt's grape shall moist the slip. Yar, yar, good Iris, quick. Methinks I hear Antony call. I see him rouse himself to praise my noble act. I hear him mock the luck of Caesar which the gods give men to excuse their after -act. Husband, I come. Now, to that name, my courage prove my title. I am fire and air. My other elements I give to baser life. So, have you done? <laughs> Come then, and take the last warmth of my lips. Farewell, kind Charmian. Iris, long farewell. kiss which is my heaven to have. Come, thou mortal wretch. With thy sharp teeth, this knot intrinsicate of life, at once untie. Poor venomous fool, be angry and despair. Oh, Eastern star. Peace. Dost thou not see my baby at my breast that sucks the nurse asleep? Break. Break. As sweet as balm, as soft as air, as gentle. Oh, Antony. Nay. I'll take thee too. What should I stay? In this vile world? So fare thee well. Now boast thee death, and thy possession lies. Alas, unparalleled.
parallel. Downy windows close, and golden Phoebus never be beheld of eyes so royal. Your crown's awry. <laughs> I'll mend it and then play. Where's the queen? <laughs> Speak softly, wake her not. Caesar hath sent Too order. slow a messenger. Oh, come apace, dispatch, I partly feel thee. Approach! Ho! Oh! All's not well, Caesar's beguiled! Here's the scene is sent from Caesar. Call him! What work is here, Charmian? Is this well done? <laughs> it is well done. And fitting for a princess descended of so many royal kings. <laughs> Soldier. How goes it here? All dead. Caesar, thy thoughts touch their effects in this. Thyself art coming to see performed the dreaded act which thou so soughtst to hinder. Oh, sir, you are too sure an augur. What you did fear is done. The manner of their deaths. I do not see them bleed. Who was last to see them? A simple countryman that brought her figs. This was his basket. Poisoned them. Oh, Caesar, this Charmian lived but now. She stood and spake. I found her trimming up the diadem on her dead mistress and on the sudden dropped. Oh, noble weakness. If they had swallowed poison, it would appear thus by an external swelling, but she looks like sleep. Here on her breast, a vent of blood, something blown. The like is on her arm. This is an aspic's trail. These fig leaves have slime upon them, such as the aspic leaves upon the caves of Nile. Take up her bed and bear her women from the monument. She shall be buried next to her Antony. No grave shall clip in it a pair so famous. High events as these strike those that make them, and their story is no less in pity than his glory, which brought them to be lamented. Our army shall, in solemn show, attend this funeral, then to Rome. Come, Messinus, see high order in this great solemnity. <laughs> <laughs>